Elif, it's so nice to meet you and thank you for taking the time oh, to yeah, talk with us. Oh yeah, thank you so much. It's a very nice opportunity for me. Thank you. <laughs> so it's always fun to come to these meetings because there's so much exciting science yes. taking place. But I wonder, as you look back this year, 2015, what struck you as really important, really great from the clinical perspective, the embryology perspective? Oh yeah, this year, oh yeah, was really nice for embryology. I think, uh, for example, um, PGS uh, is getting very, very important than before. And uh, now we try to make a trophectoderm biopsy. We changed uh, days or uh, a lot of things and next generation sequencing and qPCR and a lot of thing, uh, things are changing. Uh, that's why PJS was very important. Uh, second thing, time lapse actually I had this year a little bit uh, uh, one day. Uh, oh yeah, now it's okay. Uh, every uh, um, IVF lab are using time lapse and a lot of things changing in embryology lab. We are le learning a lot of things about uh, embryos uh, with time lapse imaging system it's another thing. Yeah. 2015, <laughs> like this, PGS, time-lapse was important, you are very important. And, and when you look at PGS and time-lapse together, you have two different types of assessment tools of the embryo. <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. Right? But, yeah. But, but if you yeah, look at totally them together, you really, yeah, you really yeah, get a good picture yeah. of that embryo. Yeah, we know picture is nothing because uh, we're, we're nice looking embryos, but not normal. In the future, I think we will make PGS for every embryos. Now it's very expensive, I think, and we will learn a lot of things about embryo uh, morphokinetics. We we can choose embryos with morphokinetic and PGS. Maybe we can combine together. I don't know. PGS is a little bit invasive for me. I don't like to take uh, some part of the embryos, but it's necessary. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll see. And if you think about what embryology was when you started and what embryology is now, it's so so much different. Oh, to totally different. Uh, our incubator are changed, and our culture system changed. Now we tr uh, we use uh, single steps. For example, in the past I hate <laughs> single step, but now I believe it and I use it. And uh, a lot of uh, things change, changing, yeah. Uh, before we were using huge incubator, now we use bench top and small pieces. We don't need huge emeralds lab. Now, yeah, change. So, Elif, as you look towards the future, even 2016 and beyond, what do you hope to see available in the lab? What do you hope you'll be able to do in the lab? And how do you think the the profession of embryology will evolve even further. Oh yeah, uh, um, future, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I think uh, PGS will, uh, will be cheaper than before and we and maybe will be very easier than before and uh, we can do for every patient and um, oh, yeah. Okay, quality control system will change. It's another very important part, I think. And we can control everything uh, on our table, I think, I hope, <laughs> very easily. Now we do this, but not for all of them. Uh, yeah, everything will change. And I, uh, maybe one day, uh, I remember um, robotic systems, maybe one day, you know, uh, vitrification, we can do uh, automatically vitrification. One day they don't need any embryologist. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, all of them can. Well, don't talk yourself out of a job yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Not yet, please. Okay. Still, they need us uh, for embryo transfer or uh, other things. Yeah, for handling. Still, we, we are necessary. But. Uh, 
for example, for Da Vinci, uh, for surgeon, now they can do uh, surgery with the machine. Uh, they don't touch the patient in, in the future, but they are still uh, need a uh, surgeon. Right. That's why <laughs> I think we are still necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>